The Cystic Fibrosis community is invited to participate in a series of videos and podcasts on individuals that are living, breathing, and succeeding with cystic fibrosis. This video, being a CF sister with Sydney Esiason, was made possible through an unrestricted educational grant from Novartis to the Boomer Esiason Foundation. Today you will meet Sydney Esiason, Gunnar Esiason's sister who grew up with Gunnar, supported him with CF, going to high school and college together, and most of all, being a best friend. Gunnar and I are really close in age, one year apart, and we grew up best friends. Uh, we did everything together, and, and we played video games together, we would play sports together, we'd go to the movies together, and we ended up actually going to college together too, so we are extremely close and basically um, are each other's biggest fans. I think one of the coolest things about Gunnar is that he never lets his disease get in the way. My parents were really attentive with his medication and everything, but in terms of our activities and our hobbies, he didn't get more attention than I did. It was equal amounts and no one got special treatment, so if um, Gunnar was slacking in a class, he would get punished for it, just like I would. So just because he had CF didn't mean that he had an excuse. Um, which I think is really important because if I had felt that way, I probably would have been a little pissed as when I was younger. And I think the attention thing, you don't really understand what the disease is. Maybe I was upset about it when I was five years old, but as I got older, I just, I felt more guilty that I didn't have the disease. But um, my parents did a really good job at making sure that both of us were treated the same way. Watching him do treatments every single day was just normal for me. Um, and obviously going to foundation events, I, I learned about it as I grew older and I don't really ever remember a specific time um, where my parents talked to me about it. I think I just kind of learned and understood along the way. There were some times where I had to Google things that I felt stupid asking my parents, like things that I think they thought that I should already know. I mean, there are plenty of times where I have to research different things like why I don't have it. That was never a question I asked, but I definitely researched that on my own so that when people asked me, um, I knew how to respond and I knew how to answer. I'll never forget this conversation I had with my dad when I was younger that everything happens for a reason in life and there's a reason I don't have it. Because I don't have it, that should just be way more incentive to do whatever I want to accomplish because there's absolutely nothing holding me back. I think about that all the time and when I feel tired or if I feel sick, I push myself even harder because I know that he wakes up feeling like that pretty much every day. I think like one of the most important things that you can do as a CF sibling is knowing how to administer their treatments and meds. So being able to put together their inhalation treatments and they have a pick line, being able to set that IV up um, with the antibiotics and being able to flush it out just in case, you know, your parents aren't there or um, emergency situations, I think that's super important to know. But when Gunnar was in the hospital, I think that was when things started to get like a little more real for me um, as a girl or two. We always try to make, you know, the most lighthearted um, positive attitude out of it. And so when Gunnar was sedated, we used to call it the truth serum. Um, so right after he'd get out of surgery, we'd ask him all like his questions and his, about his secrets and he would tell us absolutely everything. Um, and then he, you know, the next day we'd tell him everything and be like, yes, we know who you have a crush on, especially when he was younger. And that stuff's embarrassing. But um, yeah, I think we just tried to make the most positive experience out of it so that next time he went back, it wasn't it wasn't so daunting. So I've never really been the type of person to wear uh, their heart on their sleeve, but I think putting on a brave face is easy when your CF sibling is um, being totally brave and strong because it's like you're being a reflection of how they're acting. It's harder when they break down and um, are weak because then you want to break down. But I think the most important thing is trying to stay as strong as you can. And um, you, know, you have moments of privacy to break down or there are probably plenty of people you can talk to like your parents if, um, if you're ever feeling you know, upset about it. But um, I always say that it's really important for me to be uh, strong around Gunnar, especially when he's in the hospital or having moments of weakness. Gunnar and I always went to school together from nursery to university. It wasn't until college until people really started asking me about it because, you know, I think in college people are way more open about things and want to be educated way more. So that was when I really had to kind of be comfortable with explaining the disease to people um, and explaining um, how I didn't have it and um, what our dynamic was like. And 
I think people were more awkward about asking him than me, so obviously I was always kind of like the person that people went to to really understand what was going on. But I think it's important to be comfortable talking about it because if you're comfortable, the person asking you about it's gonna be comfortable. If you're awkward, then people are gonna get awkward and then they're not gonna know what to say around you. But for the most part, people are really understanding. Gunnar and I actually didn't plan on going to the same school because he has CF. It just actually ended up being that way. I wanted to go to BC before he did. Um, he actually wanted to go to another school and he's obviously older than me, so he ended up going to BC and then I ended up following. And it was probably the best thing that actually happened to us because there were times that he did get sick um, with the stomach flu. Um, so yeah, there were times where I'd have to get out of bed at 7 a.m. and rush him to the hospital. And I was the only one there for like, you know, the whole day until my mom got there at night. It was a great thing that we went to school together, not just because I could help him out, but also because um, we became closer as we grew older too. We never really, you know, separated and um, grew apart. Gunner uh, always had a brave face on, so my mom and I used to joke that he would never want to tell us when he was sick because he always wanted to do active and fun things and he never wanted to miss school and he never wanted to miss out on anything. So when he was really feeling sick, you kind of just had to judge it by how he was acting um, and trying to hide it. So um, my mom used to call me her little spy when I was in college and I would have to go check up on him, you know, at his dorm room just to see how he was feeling. And if I could tell that he wasn't feeling well, I would have to ask him. And, he would be open to me about it um, because I think he always trusted me and he, um, he knew that I would, was gonna be there for him and you know, I would tell my mom the right thing and I wouldn't over exaggerate. Um, so the duty of, I think, being a CF sibling, I was always protective of Gunner and um, I was always, I think, his like wall of defense in my eyes um, about everything really. Like if someone said something bad about him or you know, like a girl he was seeing, you had to get through me first. But that was just me. That doesn't have to be everybody. Um, but I think more importantly, I was kind of there for him about things um, he probably didn't want to talk to about um, to my parents. Um, there are a lot of things that kids don't want to tell their, their mom and dad. And um, I was like his best friend that he could tell anything to, really, from CF to his personal life. and. I still consider myself that now, and that was always how we were when we were younger. My parents always wanted me to have um, an identity outside of CF. CF will always shape my life and it'll always affect me, but I definitely am able to have my own path as well as being able to be connected to this. And I think as a CF sibling and of somebody that doesn't have CF, they. They worry about it so much, but they also need to, you know, worry about themselves and um, worry about like their own lives, but also be able to be there, you know, at the same time. His CF has definitely helped me become a stronger, more independent person because he's had to rely on my parents so much that when I was younger, I kind of found myself doing my own thing. And as a grown up, it's really helped me um, be of a more independent, self reliant person. Um, but I know that he's always there for me, he's still my big brother, and um, he's always gonna stick up for me. He's always gonna, you know, not like some of my boyfriends. He's always gonna be, you know, that person there that I go to, and he's gonna always be my best friend. So even though he, he does have CF, he's still my big brother, and he still helps me in a ton of ways.